All right, what are we doing today? How do you know that besides the fact that I wrote it on my paper? Oh, it's on the lesson plans. Excellent. So the lesson plans actually say we're factoring polynomials, right? But yesterday we talked real specifically about there's binomials and trinomials and everything like that. Yesterday we talked about factoring the difference of squares, squares cubes. cubes, the sum of squares and the sum of cubes, and we also did factoring by grouping, grouping right? Okay, how confident did you guys feel in all of those? Fairly confident? Okay, how did you feel specifically about factoring by grouping? That was your favorite. I am very glad to hear that, like for real. And you will see why in a moment. Okay, so today we're going to factor trinomials, specifically trinomials. Now, before we even start, will there be trinomials that we cannot factor? Yes. Okay, and if we cannot factor them, what do we write? Prime. It means it can't be factored. It means it can only be divided by itself in one, right? Okay, so when there is a trinomial that you can factor, I want to show you how to do that. There are two ways to do it. It's actually one way, but one's kind of like a way faster. I'm not going to show you that one first. Why am I not going to show you that one first? It doesn't always work, okay? I'm going to show you the, the planned out way that will work every time first, and then I'll show you the little shortcut way, okay? Now, for the record, last period got kind of frustrated with me because I said I got to show you the harder way first, and then I can show you the easier way, and I got done with the, the first way, and they were like, I thought you were going to show us the harder way first. This is not even hard. And I was like, exactly. Totally inappropriate. So let's let's start, okay? Here's what we're going to start with. X squared plus 5X plus 6. Looks like my blue marker is finally dying. It's just because I use it all the time. <laughs> Okay, x squared plus 5x plus 6. So, the first thing I need you to be able to do is identify some values. Okay, now, is this in standard form? Do the exponents start with the highest of exponents and decrease one by every term? So it's in standard form. When it's in standard form, this term is a. This term is b. And this term is c. Please notice what I underlined and what I did not. I did only underline the coefficients, right? Or in the case of the last term, I only underlined the constant, right? So if I said to you, what is A, what is your answer? One. And what is B? Five. And what is C? Six, okay? I don't want you to get confused and tell me that A or that B is 5X. B is not 5X. B is only five, and that's going to be important. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so here, here are our steps. Step one, find A, C. What am I asking you to do with A and C? Multiply them. Well, what's A? One, and what's C? Does anybody know what one times six is? Seven, exactly. Yeah, you guys are ridiculous. I know. It's fine. <laughs> so, 1 times 6 is 6. I just want to be clear on that. 1 times 6 is 6, goofballs. Step 2. Wait, that's step 1. Is everybody okay with step 1? 2. Step 2. Find B. Five. Step three, here's what we're going to write, multiply and add. What I have to find, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to phrase this in a form of a question, but I am not ready for you to answer it yet. Does everybody understand? I don't want you to shout out an answer, okay? What I need you to find is what two numbers multiply to be six 
and add to be 5. Do you guys remember that part where I said I don't want you to shout out the answer? Yeah, do you remember that part? Okay. I even said I'm going to phrase it. I can go play you the recording back, right? I need you to find, figure out what two numbers multiply to be 6 and add to be 5. Do you have those two numbers in your head? Step four, split middle. We are going to split the middle term of the original problem. We're going to go back to the original problem and rewrite it, but we're going to split the middle term into the two parts that you just thought about in your head. Now, since like four of you said it out loud, we already know the answer, right? We know the answer should be 2x and 3x, right? Do you see how I split the middle term into two parts? I didn't write 5x, I wrote 2x and 3x. Does it have to be 2x and 3x? For this one it does. Could I, just for argument's sake, write 3x and 2x? Yes, I could. I'm going to show you in just a second that that does not matter, just to be clear, okay? But it can't be 1x and 4x, right? Oh, it could? Yes, as in no. Okay, excellent. So I split the middle term into two parts. Oh, look, there's four terms. I wish I knew a way to factor something with four terms. Oh my gosh, grouping, which you guys said you loved as your favorite one. What is common in those two terms? If I factor out an x from each of those two terms, what do I have left? x plus 2. What's common in just the second two terms? A 3. If I factor out a 3 from those two terms, what do I have left? x plus 2. Do these two terms have something in common? They have an x plus 2 in common. And if I factor out an x plus 2, what's left? x plus 3. Oh look, the answer. Guys, that's the hard way. We're doing this the hard way right now. I'm just making sure you understand that. Okay, let's do another one. x squared plus 7x plus 12. I'm, I am going to go one step further here because some of these are not going to be always as easy as these are. So I want to make sure you have some steps that you can follow just in case. Do you understand? Watch. AC. In this particular problem, A is 1 and C is 12, making AC 12. Okay? In this particular problem, B is 7. Are we all in agreement on that? What if you couldn't think of the two numbers that multiplied to be 12 and added to be 7 right off the top of your head? Can I teach you a strategy just in case you can't think of them? What are the factors of 12? 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Write the factors. Okay? And just so... The way that I do it so that I don't miss one is I start always with 1. 1 and 12 is it divisible by 2. Then write 2 and whatever its factor is. Is it divisible by 3? Yes, 3 and 4. Well, I know I'm done because I've, I've done all the possible combinations, right? But if I wasn't done, I would go to 4 and then 5 and then 6. And if it's a factor, write it. Uh, if it's divisible into that number, write at it and its factor so you can physically see what all the factors are that multiply to be 12. Does that make sense? So now, can I use 1 and 12 to make 7? Can I use 2 and 6 to make 7? Can I use 3 and 4 to make 7? So do you see that real quick strategy that I showed you just in case you can't think of the numbers off the top of your head? Okay, so we know now that we want to use 3 and 4, right? So split your middle term into two parts. The first part stays exactly the same. The last part stays exactly the same. I'm just writing 3x and 4x. 
Now I have a polynomial with four terms, so I factor by grouping. What's common in the first two? X, what's left if I factor out an X from the first two terms? X plus three. What about the second two terms? What's common in the second two terms? A four, what's, what's left if I factor or divide out a four from each term? X plus three. What do these two terms have in common? An X plus three, and if I factor out an X plus three from each term, what's left? X plus four. Ask me. Don't, no, 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 don't say it yet. Don't say it yet. Don't say it yet. I know what you're gonna say and I don't want you to say it yet. Deal? Deal? Okay, one more, you ready? X squared minus 2X minus 15. Psst, good observation, just not yet. You should not, it's fine. All right, are you ready? What do we do first? Wait, I think I'm, I, I've, I think I forgot this. We split the middle term and then I forgot set five. Factor by grouping. I didn't want to like forget to write down a step. You got it? Okay, so back here, find AC. AC is negative 15. B is negative two. What well, multiplies to be AC and adds to be B. So five and three what kind of five and what kind of three? Negative five and positive three, are you certain? Good. X squared minus five X plus three X minus 15. I'm gonna show you something uh, on this problem as soon as we get it finished, okay? What's common in the first two terms? X, what's left? What's common in the second two terms? What's left? What's common in these two terms? What's left? What if, instead of writing that, I wrote this? What if I wrote these two backwards? Well, a second ago we said it doesn't matter, right? Can I show you that it doesn't matter? I would like to prove that to you. All right, what's common in the first two? What's left? What's common in the second two? Negative five, what's left? X plus three. What do they have in common? And what's left? Are these two equal? Because it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. Okay? Now, if this if this one said x minus five and x plus three, and this one said x minus three and x plus five, would those be the same? No. Okay? But hopefully that doesn't happen if you've written all your numbers correctly. Okay? Now that's the hard way. How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable with doing it the harder way? That's pretty simple, right? Okay. So why did I teach you the hard way first? Because it works every time. It works every time. Okay. So let's talk about the easy way. You ready? Not only do we have to show you how to do the easy way, we have to talk about when you can do it. So you know when you're allowed and when you're not. Is that fair? Okay, go back up to this problem, the very first example that I did for you, okay? What was AC again? Six, and what was five? I mean, what's B? Smarty pants. What multiplies to be six and adds to be five? Two and three? 
So can I go straight from here, straight to here? What multiplies to be 12 and adds to be 7? Straight here. What multiplies to be negative 15, which is AC and adds to be negative 2? Negative 5 and 3. So can I go straight here? That's the short way. When does it work? When it's only x squared. When a is 1. When a is 1. When a is 1, these two middle steps are not necessary. Can you do them if you want? Absolutely. Because you just told me this way wasn't hard at all. Right? But can I go straight from this problem? If a is 1, can I go straight from the problem to the answer? Yes. Questions? This is your worksheet for today. It has two sides. You can tell the difference between the two sides because one says A and one says E. So if you look at side A, I want you to do the circled problems on side A. 3, 6, 7, 9, and 13. They're coming. Just be patient. <laughs> On side E, I just want you to do the circled problems. 2, 3, 8, 9, and 13. I mean 2, 5. Sorry. I mean, most of you are probably going to do number three anyways because it's super easy and that gives you a good chance of extra credit, okay? All right, start on side E. Everybody, excuse me, start on side A. Everyone is looking at side A. On side A, you're doing three, six, seven, nine, and 13. On side E, two, 13, 5, 8, and 9. It's just 10 problems. Why am I only giving you 10 problems? Do you think you can grasp the concept by doing 10 problems? Then do I need to give you 40? Okay, you can do 40 if you want to, okay? Mm -hmm. If you do any extra, do you get extra credit? Yes. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, you have the rest of the period to work quietly on your work. If you get too loud, then you'll work silently, won't you? Okay, so if you prefer to work quietly, then please work quietly so I don't have to ask you to work silently if you get too loud. Okay, peace.